Welcome to part 17 of my Western Roman Empire campaign. Imperator Aelanus II has died of obesity and now passed the empire to his son Flavius. Aelanus' reign had left many positive but also some very bad memories and so Flavius' goal is to be a better general than his father. But whether he will succeed remains to be seen. And so welcome to Crusader Kings 3. The Fallen Eagle. With Aelanus dead, another emperor has died. I don't think my powerful vassals have ever been as happy with me as these ones without influencing them. But unfortunately, not all my vassals were so happy with me. Hello there! And I had to be careful that it did not come to a civil war. After all the organizational matters were settled for the time being, it was back to the war, which I won easily after conquering the enemy capital. After I had successfully ended the war, I took care of the administration and the promotion of the Roman culture. But also the next war should not wait long. After the war, there were peasant uprisings. Normally, I would have used my Praetorian Guard in such a case, because it would be the quickest on the spot. However, I had to realize that it was no longer there. Probably the province was conquered by another vassal or something. My men at arms were still in Africa because of the last war, and so I decided to use the rest of my army against the peasant uprising. But shortly afterwards, a Norwegian tribe called the Vestergutland declared war on me. They had waited well for the situation because my armies were spread out and it would take some time until my men at arms would arrive in the battle area. The enemy target were lands in Spain and I did not wait long and sent my legions there to defend the coast of Spain. However, the Nordic armies were faster than my legions, but my legions still arrived quickly enough to disrupt their sieges. In the battle that followed, my legions managed to capture the enemy commander and force the surrender, and so calmer times returned. My next goal was to completely conquer the Arabian Peninsula. In the meantime, one of my vassals laid a claim on my emperor title, and because I did not want to risk a dangerous war, I set in motion an assassination plot against him. By then, the war against the last Arabian kingdom had been won and the whole peninsula was under Roman control. In the following years, nothing much happened. I built buildings and every now and then there was a minor war at the various borders of the empire. But then, in 627 AD, Flavius dared to take the step of attacking Antioch, the last Persian nation, the same people his father had failed so miserably to conquer. Flavius, however, succeeded with ease and so the last Persian nation was now under Roman rule. So Flavius had managed to take revenge for his father's death. But this victory was only partly good for him. He withdrew more and more from public life and the administration of the Imperium was neglected. From time to time he attacked smaller nations who plundered the empire, but otherwise it remained quiet around him. One last time he put himself together and did what some had already thought possible in Octavius' time. He dared the first advance into Indian territory. But then he withdrew for good. He only occasionally made sure that his son Victorious was halfway prepared for his new position. He declared war for the last time knowing that he would not live to see it. And so ends the story of Flavius Theodosius, who handed over the empire to his son during the war, believing that every good emperor should begin his reign by winning a war. And so the faith of the Roman Empire is now in the hands of Victorius. He is blessed by birth with an incredible intelligence, but some are skeptical about him being in power. He himself is an incredible fan of Aurelian and Octavius. He has often expressed the wish that the people should regard them as gods. And so he had drawn up his own plan of how he imagined his reign 
and how he would manage to immortalize the two of them forever. However, it was not easy with him because he was greedy and became extremely stressed when he gave away money or titles. Nevertheless, he did it to please his vassals as many of them did not like him. Besides, he now had to continue to fight his father's war. After spending about 20 minutes on this, I managed to resolve all the factions against Victorious. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Victorious did not pay much attention to his vassals as long they did not cause him any problems and so the kingdom of Gathia was able to free itself from Roman rule. And so many felt he was not suitable. For a long time he did nothing and shut himself off. But through the meeting with many priests, many speculated that he wanted to reform the religion. And so it was. Only a few months later, a new faith was introduced. The new religion was called Octavianism and was designed especially for war. But this religion would plunge the empire into massive chaos.